So Bills and Tears is something we've always wanted to do, you know, because of, um, you know, we've had cities in the game for a while. We have many cities, we have many buildings. Therefore, we could have many interiors. It's a perfect opportunity to put in a lot of play space. Now, with the players flying around these buildings, they've been largely urban landscapes, um, fairly uninteractable. You know, we've done a few uh, landing pads to uh, get the players in and out there, but really the the real good stuff was on the inside. So up until now, we've been on the outside wondering about the inside. And today we're going to talk about the inside, looking outside. Let's start with rooftops. Now, up until now, we've largely designed our cityscapes um, to be more of a, a backdrop to the landing zone. Um, we have the social space generally in the middle and then the cityscape goes around it. And they've been designed to give the best composition, to be interesting to fly around, but we've not really thought about designing these uh, buildings from the inside out. So what we're looking at here is some potential concepts for what could be interesting landing spaces that drives the architecture of the building. With landing pads, it doesn't necessarily mean, need to be on the top of the building. It could be, you know, halfway down or, or lower. So imagine, you know, you're in the lower parts of the city and then we'd open up these additional play spaces. And as you can see here, it's not just the landing pad, it's the gameplay space that goes along with it too. Now, it doesn't necessarily need to be a single building. Imagine there is a uh, network hub that services a few different buildings. So what we're looking at here is maybe like a, a transit hub where the player could land, get on some transit, and then that would lead to some buildings. Okay, so maintenance spaces. Uh, so these could be really interesting in terms of player interaction. You know, they could be dealing with the, the power or the maintenance of the building. And then also you could have technical spaces. So these would be more for technicians. It could deal with the data or the communications. And what we're looking at here is potential some, uh, you know, gameplay puzzles where the player has to uh, work their way inside the main uh, operation booth. So moving on to residential. What we wanted to do with residential is two things. One, explore um, investigating the potential player housing. And also we want to explore a variety of architectural styles. We want the place to eventually be able to populate the uh, player own habitation. So you see here, like a first indication of how, you know, the sort of dressing styles that you'd be able to do. Outside of something that's fairly utilitarian, we also want to do something that could be fairly high end. So here we're just exploring some ideas about what a space could feel like on a different architectural style. Space is dedicated to more than just habitation. So these could be multi-layered uh, social spaces, and these could also inform uh, advanced traversal routes for the player to be able to uh, get inside uh, these habitation rooms. So as we're talking through various uh, architectural styles, what you're seeing here is just a, a collection of ideas, uh, a collection of architectural intent to create like a, a palette or a mood um, that will inform art style and uh, gameplay opportunities. So outside of residential, we're moving into the commercial area. So what this means is it means we can look at areas that are more gameplay focused uh, outside of player habitation. So when we're talking about these, these could be office blocks, these could be corporate owned um, inside here, there could be corporate wings, there could be manufacturing, there could be office spaces. So what we're looking at here is a pretty cool uh, like skyline uh, bar in Lowville. That could be fun. So right at the foot of the building, we're going to start talking about the lobby. So as I said before, these are going to be access points to the player. But also we can do more than just uh, a standard uh, foyer that we're seeing in the game right now. So this sort of space we're seeing here is imagine there's an underground transit network and that transit station feeds a network of building uh, lobbies. So these could be uh, social spaces, these could be really good combat spaces. Uh, they could have access to many restaurants or bars or facilities. And we're just showing that in a variety of art styles. So one's a fairly low end, one could be fairly high end, but the, the infrastructure is the same. Now, finally, we're going to talk about the underground. Now, this is, I think, one of the coolest spaces. So rather than just focusing on the 
the uh, positive axis of the building. We're going to look at the underground. Now, what this does, it means we can access a whole area of play space that uh, doesn't need to be contained inside the building. So within a lobby, um, we want the player to start to traverse down into these spaces, and these could be underground uh, transit networks. They could be abandoned underground transit networks. This then could drive potential racing opportunities. So when we was doing this, we thought, oh, it'd be really cool. Like, what would it look like if there's an underground street race going on there? Also, there could be traversal opportunities. Like I said before, if the player wanted to go into one building, down and then through and then up into another building, what would that traversal network be like? Especially if we're thinking about if it's an older part of the underground of a city, maybe it's uh, less used, you know, people have built up, um, that would uh, instantly inspire a whole bunch of traversal and uh, investigation missions there. So just in case we're thinking it's all just blue sky concept, actually we're going to start full production on these spaces right at the end of this quarter. <laughs>